A warm welcome to all who are tuning into this charla, the Biden-Harris vision for Colombia and the Colombian American community. My name is Guy Mantel, and I am the Executive Director of Global Americans, and we're thrilled that we were approached to co-host this event and evaluate the current state of the U.S.-Colombian relationship and what that relationship might look like under a possible Biden-Harris administration, with a particular focus on how a Biden-Harris administration might engage Colombia, Colombian Americans, and the Western Hemisphere more broadly. For those engaging with our organization for the first time, I'd invite you to find us at theglobalamericans.org where you'll find critical analysis on the region that seeks to broaden the discussion of the Americas within the global context. We're thrilled to be joined tonight by experts, policymakers, change makers, and thought leaders. But more importantly, we're thrilled to be joined tonight by concerned citizens engaging in the process of learning more about the candidates in this upcoming election, including what is at stake for their communities in roughly one week's time. On the table tonight will be questions of how a Biden-Harris administration might leverage longstanding us Columbia ties for the betterment of both countries. We will discuss in English and in Spanish what a reinvigorated us Columbia partnership might look like, what issues affect not only Colombian-American diaspora communities, but frankly transcend those communities and affect cities across both of those countries and our hemisphere. At the end of the conversation, I know Roberto will be leading attendees in a virtual phone bank, so we do invite you to stay tuned for that. Without further ado, I'm now turning this over to Will Freeman, who I know has a few introductory remarks before we roll this into our panel discussion. On behalf of Global Americans, thank you again, everyone, for tuning in. And Will, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Guy, and thank you, Global Americans, uh, for welcoming us. My name is Will Freeman. I would now like to offer uh, a warm welcome to all of our attendees tonight on behalf of Colombianos con Biden. For those of you joining one of our events uh, for the first time, we are a nationwide group of Colombian Americans and allies of the Colombian American community dedicated to helping elect Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Kamala Harris as the next president and vice president of the United States. Together, we work alongside several other groups under the Todos con Biden umbrella, and we're looking forward to getting out the vote in these last critical days of the election. Uh, tonight, we are pleased to have with us uh, the full leadership council of our organization. This includes Ambassador Liliana Ayalde, Paula Uribe, Juan Gonzalez, Evelyn Perez Verdia, and Ivan Rebolledo. Uh, we are also honored to be joined uh, by Dr. Eduardo Gamarra, Professor of Political Science in the Department of Politics and International Relations at Florida International University, uh, who will now offer some opening remarks and introduce our honored guests and panelists. Thank you all. And Eduardo, over to you. Thank you very much. It's a, a real uh, pleasure and privilege to join you all to, uh, to again, uh, uh, join uh, especially people like, uh, like Senator Menendez uh, and Representative Gallego. So um, what I'd like to do just in the course of the next two or three minutes is talk a little bit about uh, how uh, Senator Biden has, uh, has seen uh, particularly the region as a whole, but more specifically, uh, Colombia. Uh, if we go back to 1990, when, uh, when the Senator was uh, a very active member of, well, very important committee, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Uh, he began to think a lot about the unfolding drug war um, and how severely it was affecting Colombia at that time. And uh, rather than, than taking the, the approach that many people wanted, which was the approach being much more on the interdiction side, much, much, uh, much more targeting uh, countries uh, in, a, in, a, in a police or military fashion, uh, he began or was one of the precursors of a different approach, which in fact led to the creation of the Andean Trade Preference Act, which largely looked at, at the problems of, of drugs in Colombia, not as some kind of fatal flaw that Colombia had, not as something that Latin Americans as a whole did to invade the United States or to fill us with, uh, with drugs, but more as a problem of development, more as something that could be approached from a, an entirely different uh, frame of, of mind. And so if you look at the, um, the last 30 years or so of, of Senator Biden's career in the Senate, or something that actually have 
uh, gone, uh, the Affordable Health Care Act and its protections all gone with no, with no replacement. And then let's even go further down the line. You know, we know there's a lot of uh, Colombians here that are here without permission. They want to become citizens. We know a lot of them are here as dreamers. This administration has done nothing for that community. If anything, it's only made it worse, created an animus towards our uh, immigrant communities, uh, has destroyed the protections when it comes to the DREAM Act, and has set back the immigration movement, a conference immigration reform movement for, uh, you know, for years. So if we want to actually better the lot of Col Colombians and Colombian Americanos in this country, we need to have the Biden-Harris ticket, you know, both for the economic reasons, in my opinion, for the healthcare policy reasons, and as well, and as well for um, the immigration reform movement. Uh, and I could go on and on about the, for the, the, the actual uh, geopolitical and foreign policy ramifications of the country of Colombia, but I think uh, Sarah Menendez can handle that way better than I can. Yes, yeah, Senator Menendez. Uh, thank you, Claudia, for uh, sort of like moderating this and your distinguished journalism, we, we appreciate it. And uh, Professor Gamarra, thank you very much for bringing us all together. And I'm thrilled to be here with my colleague from the House of Representatives doing an outstanding job. Eh, para mí esto está bien claro. Los colombianos eh, son especial a los Estados Unidos. Eh, tienen más de dos millones de colombianos americanos en este país. La relación entre los Estados Unidos y Colombia es especial en todo Latinoamérica. Ahora, el preservar esa relación promover esa relación, entender la importancia de esa relación, sin duda, eh, se encuentra en Joe Biden. Joe Biden fue uno de los primeros, como dijo el profesor, en promover el Plan Colombia, un plan de lo cual yo fui uno de los autores en ese momento en la Cámara de Representantes, que ayudó a Colombia a restaurar su propia soberanía en su país que trajo eh, una vía a, a la paz, eh, que trajo una vía a restaurar la economía eh, de Colombia. So Joe Biden was one of its primary authors uh, in the um, United States Senate when he chaired the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, which uh, I later came on to chair and, and then the senior Democrat on. Joe Biden has said que los colombianos han hecho sacrificios enormes personal, con la vida de colombianos, económicamente. He understands the reality of what Colombia has gone through. His visits over three times as vice president of the United States to Colombia was in promotion of, for example, having Colombia be a NATO, a NATO global partner, something that did not exist before. The free trade agreement, its implementation uh, that Professor Gamarra spoke about. And unlike President Trump, who insulted last year in Florida, President Duque, and said, President Duque has done nothing for us. Al contrario, cuando yo fui el año pasado a Colombia eh, y me reuní con el presidente Duque, estoy convencido de las contribuciones enormemente que está haciendo en nuestra lucha común. Uh, entiendo los sacrificios que continúan. Entiendo sus esfuerzos en eh, eh, reducir la cultivación de coca. Entiendo sus compromisos con los Estados Unidos en el tema de seguridad. Y entiendo qué buen vecino ha sido los colombianos, los más de 5 millones de venezolanos que han salido de Venezuela. We should be saying President Duque and the Colombians are doing an extraordinary job of being a leader in the hemisphere. Not that President Duque has done nothing for us. These are the differences. This is why Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are so important to this community. Senator Menendez, regarding that successful relationship you mentioned between both countries, there are some concerns um, related with the support that some um, members of the political party of President Duque uh, have given to, to, to Trump, to Trump uh, com campaigns. Um, what would you say uh, are going to be the effects of this if Biden is elected? Joe Biden is going to put the importance of the U.S.-Columbia relationship and its people above some individual political players that may have tried to interfere in our elections. I would say that at a time in a Congress that is very divided on partisan basis, 
The great news is that Colombia has shared bipartisan support, overwhelming democratic support for its continuing assistance to Colombia. Colombian politicians would be better served seeking to resolve the challenges of their country than interfering in the politics of the United States. A strong bipartisan support for the US-Columbia relationship is the key to maintaining that in the future. But I know that Joe Biden, regardless of what any Colombian politician will say, va a poner la responsabilidad de nuestras comunidades en Colombia y en los Estados Unidos primero sobre todo, y va a continuar los esfuerzos que ha llevado en favor de esa relación entre los Estados Unidos y Colombia como una relación ejemplar en el hemisferio occidental. Thank you. Um, uh, Representative Gallego, do you think that um, bipartisan support is at risk if Biden yep. is the one who wins the presidency? I don't think bipartisan support is at risk because of Biden winning the presidency. I think the actions of these Colombian politicians, both on the left and the right, are putting the bipartisan support of Congress at risk. I think you know, Vice President Biden is a very responsible and forward-looking uh, leader, and he understands the advantages both for Colombia and for the United States to continue the special relationship. But, you know, Senator Menendez can tell you the history of how hard it was to even get Plan Colombia to, to get going in the first place and how hard we've all worked to keep that special relationship with Colombia bipartisan. And then when you have, um, you know, uh, some of these more, I would say, radical uh, members of Congress, uh, you know, trying to interfere in this election, it makes it more difficult for us to go and get some of our members to support uh, you know, aid towards Colombia. And not just on the left, but on the right here. There is a very uh, you know, isolationist movement that's been, it's growing uh, in the Republican Party and in the Democratic Party. Uh, and we don't want Colombia to be a, a big part, uh, to, be, to be a victim of that. Uh, so that's why I wrote that article in, in CNN in Espanol. That's why I've been talking to all my friends elected office in Colombia uh, and just warning them that this is a game that's not worth being played for. Uh, at, the, at the end of the day, Colombia loses and the United States loses if we don't continue to have this bipartisan relationship, uh, uh, that very strong bipartisan uh, effort uh, towards Colombia. Thank you. Congressman Gallego, in your first answer, you mentioned healthcare as a reason uh, for Colombians, um, Colombian Americans to vote for uh, Biden Harris. Let's go deeper into health issues. Uh, let's talk about COVID-19. COVID Why uh, Biden Harris are more prepared from your point of view to manage uh, this pandemic in a good way? Well, Claudia, thank you again for, for, for being our moderator. So number, number one, we know from experience, and uh, Vice President Biden knows how to, how, how to do this. He dealt with it with Ebola. He dealt with it with H1N1. Uh, we, you know, he, just from an attitude perspective, he understands and respects scientists and, and actually was able to uh, put it, you know, would be able to put his self beyond, uh, you know, put himself beyond it and actually work with scientists to get this done. He's going to listen to the hard data and he's going to, you know, try to stop COVID-19 uh, in its track. You know, he warned us in early December that we weren't ready for uh, a pandemic. Uh, and we are, we are where we are. He's been talking about the fact that we need to mask up and have a nationwide mask mandate uh, before, you know, many uh, of our elected officials even recommended and, and did it. So we know it because he's done it in the past. We know because he's talking about, about it now. Uh, and I truly think that at the end of the day, if you're a Latino uh, and you look at what is going on with COVID-19, you understand that we have been disproportionately hurt and hit by COVID-19 because we are the essential workers of the country. We're the ones that basically kept this country fed. Uh, and we're, you know, when everyone else was self-isolating, self-quarantining, we're the ones that continue to go to work. We were the ones who pulled the, the food from the fields. We're the ones that slaughtered the animals. We had processed it and we delivered it. I mean, in that process, we experienced expose ourselves to the coronavirus uh, and you know in, re in return for that we get uh, very little support when it comes to uh, essential pay uh, and many of them are going without health care. That type of disrespect is not going to continue under Vice President Biden. He's going to understand that our, our worth, our dignity uh, has kept this country alive uh, during this most you know, horrible period and he's going to treat it as such uh, when he becomes president. May I join uh, the congressman in that response just a little bit? Of course, of course. Go ahead. Uh, 
So I think we must start off from the very beginning and remember, in January, President Trump was told by his national security advisor that COVID-19 was five times more lethal than the typical flu mm -hmm. and that it was transmitted airborne. The president, in his own words, recorded by an author who interviewed him, said that he chose not to tell the American people that. So he lied to the American people and 225,000 Americans have died. Eight million have been infected. A disproportionate number of Latinos have suffered both the infection and the deaths. Joe Biden will be honest with the American people. He will tell them we have a challenge and here is how we will defeat this virus and this pandemic. He has a plan, unlike the president, who even to this day continues to say that the virus is going away when we see record numbers of states with greater increases, more hospitalizations and more infections. Joe Biden has a plan from honoring the fact that wearing a mask is not a political statement, it's a healthcare reality, from going on to making sure of enforcing social distancing, from making sure that we have the resources for universal testing and contact tracing, which is critical. The only way that Colombian businessmen are going, Amer Colombian American businessmen are going to be able to thrive and prosper as with any businessman in America is when I can guarantee citizens in my home state of New Jersey or anywhere else that their visit to the store, to the theater, to the restaurant, in terms of risk of COVID-19 has been dramatically mitigated. That's not what President uh, Trump is doing. Joe Biden will give the resources for that, make sure that we have the testing, the contact tracing, then go ahead and help small businesses do what's necessary to be able to open, but open safely with whatever safeguards have to take place, make sure that our schools can open safely with the necessary resources. That's the fundamental difference to the question, Claudia. El presidente sabía la realidad en enero de este año. En lugar de decirle al pueblo norteamericano la verdad, mintió y 225 mil personas han muerto y más de 8 millones han ido afectados. Senator Menendez, even though respecting science, some people may fear that a different way in, in facing COVID-19 could, could impact in the economy very badly. What would you say to them if they think uh, Biden represents that more conservative measures to, to, to handle pandemic? Well, it's a great question. And I, and I like the fact that for the first time, we're hearing about Joe Biden being conservative. Which is great. But in any event, uh, look, I think uh, Joe Biden has said it very clearly. Yes, we will follow the science because only the science can leave us to the freedom of enjoying the life we knew prior to COVID-19. Solamente siguiendo la ciencia y los doctores y los expertos nos van a crear la oportunidad de regresar a la vida antes del COVID-19. Ahora, seguir la ciencia no quiere decir cerrar la economía, quiere decir abrir la economía en forma responsable para que todos podamos disfrutar, para que nuestros negocios puedan crecer de nuevo, para que podamos tener confianza como el consumidor que podemos salir, ¿no? Pero no llega ese momento en lo cual tenemos esa confianza porque se ha presentado un plan de tratar de contener el virus. Hoy mismo, hoy mismo, el, el jefe de, de la oficina del de presidente, el chief of staff, el jefe de, de la oficina dice, no vamos a controlar la pandemia, no vamos a controlar la pandemia. That is a disaster for recipe. We must control the pan, uh, pandemic as we wait for antivirals and a vaccine and all of that to take place. But we cannot have the flag of surrender that we have surrendered against the pandemic. Thank you. Would you like to add something, uh, Representative Gallego, or we can I mean, move uh, to the last question? Yes, yeah, so no, Senator is correct. We can, we as government can say we're gonna shut down or, or not shut down. But unless the virus is controlled, you're not going to have consumer confidence to actually go out and do anything. 
And if you don't have consumer confidence, then you don't actually have a working functioning economy. So this idea that the that you know the, the Vice President Biden is going to cause something greater harm by uh, imposing restrictions to the point where the economy ends up shutting down and there's repercussions from that uh, is, is overlooking the fact that this thing will happen on its own. People will not travel, people will not go to restaurants, people will not go to movie theaters. All these things will not happen, which do not, which will create a stagnant economy because there is no confidence in safe, in public health and public safety. So the president, vice president approach is correct uh, in that manner. And if you are a small business owner, you want that steady leadership uh, and predictability to, to actually be able to reopen uh, so you can expand your business. Thank you. This last question is the same one for both of you. Um, we all know that this is a crucial election for the future of the United States. Given that, what would you say to that Colombian Americans who are still undecided for whom to vote or who those who already decided not to vote? Well, yeah, let me, I'm gonna let the Senator close because, uh, you, you know, you always let the preacher uh, go after the pastor because they know how to bring it home. Um, so the first thing I ask you is, uh, are you better off now than you were four years ago? You know, in, and in all scales and every way we look at it, there, it's very difficult for anyone to say that. Are you able to see your family? I haven't seen my, my mom, my son's grandmother, uh, I think in about uh, four weeks. And even then we have to be extremely uh, careful. There are people that have, have not been able to say goodbye to their family members. You know, where are you in terms of your personal uh, economy right now? We know that uh, wealth is being lost uh, on a daily basis here. And especially in the Latino community, we're barely come bouncing back from the recession to the point where, you know, to now that I think we've actually been even set further back. Um, do you actually feel that the actual bo body uh, politic of this country is even healthier? Look at the animus and the animosity that this president has caused uh, in the last four years, the stress that people feel just wondering what he's going to tweet out this morning. You know, this is what uh, has happened for the last four years, and it's only going to get worse. You know, COVID-19 it has potentially created, you know, hundreds of thousands of people with pre-existing conditions. And then three days after the election, we may not even have any uh, protections for pre-existing conditions. So, you know, we need to move on beyond that. We have steady leadership focused leadership that, that we can have in Biden uh, and, and uh, Senator Harris, uh, something that I think we need, the economy needs. And then just on the, in terms of foreign policy, being able to rejoin the world in a dignified manner where we're respected for our leadership uh, instead of this embarrassment that we have right now. And I also want to make, make, make people understand that we actually have a great potential to really start pivoting away uh, from other spots of the world and really have a true focus on the Western Hemisphere where we can have, you know, some, you know, true uh, capitalistic democracies going from, you know, uh, Anchorage, uh, Alaska, all the way down to Tierra del Fuego, with Colombia being the linchpin, the key to that, to being able to change, you know, this uh, whole uh, region and hemisphere. You know, it only took a total of 30 years to bring, uh, you know, Western Europe back uh, from World War II. We can bring all of Latin America, all the Western hemisphere, uh, up to the standards uh, and econ economic development standards of a lot of these other Western, uh, Western Europe. We could do it within 10 years with the with focus uh, of a Biden-Harris administration and really rechange and reset the whole world in that. So this is the opportunity we have. Uh, and I just, I just hope we understand that, you know, it is the most important election in our lifetime uh, because Number one, I do believe this is our only opportunity, maybe our last opportunity to truly save democracy at the ballot box. But number two, we can really change the entire landscape of the world with the right foreign policy that's aimed at Latin America. Thank you, Congressman Gallego. Now, Senator Menendez, your same question. Okay, thank you, Claudia. Uh, mira, a mis hermanos colombianos le digo lo siguiente. Cuando tú no sales a votar, permite otro que decide sobre tu futuro, sobre la educación de tus hijos, la asistencia a su negocio, el bienestar de tu familia, la salud de nuestra comunidad, nuestra relación entre los Estados Unidos y Colombia, todo eso y mucho más se va a decidir en esta elección. Y cuando tú no votas, pues obviamente el que sí sale a votar está decidiendo por ti. 
en mi vida en este país yo no he querido un momento que alguien decide por mí. Yo quiero decidir por mí mismo. Y por eso le insto que deben salir a votar. En Joe Biden tenemos a alguien que no conoce a Colombia. Conoce a sus líderes. Desde los 90 está eh, eh, viajando a Colombia. Fue uno de los promoveros eh, del Plan Colombia. De la preferencia andina, que muchos se olvidan, que le dio una preferencia económica, entre otros países, a Colombia. Eh, es alguien, como dice el presidente, que ha viajado tres veces a Colombia. ¿Cuántas veces ha ido el presidente Trump o el vicepresidente Pence? Es alguien que ha reconocido los sacrificios de los colombianos y la buena posición que Colombia ha tenido como un líder hemisférico conjunto con los Estados Unidos. Hay una gran diferencia. Hay una gran diferencia si vamos a terminar esta pandemia y poder regresar de una vida normal. ¿Alguien que tiene un plan para hacerlo o alguien que se ha declarado eh, que no vamos a controlar la pandemia? No podemos aceptar esa realidad. ¿Queremos una economía que trabaja para todos de nosotros o solamente lo más rico? ¿Queremos en lugar de estar instigando en un juez a la Corte Suprema ocho días antes de las elecciones, de tener una ayuda a los pequeños negocios, a nuestras familias, a esos que se encuentran desempleados y desamparados? los que tienen temor que no van a poder su, pagar su propio eh, eh, alquiler o eh, la hipoteca. Esa es la diferencia. Es la diferencia también. Sus hijos van a tener que graduarse debajo de una deuda enorme o actualmente pueden ir a la universidad y realizar las capacidades que el Señor le dio a cada uno de ellos sin una deuda enorme. Y vamos a tener un programa de salud en el país más rico del mundo, donde ninguno de nosotros tenemos que preocuparnos que actualmente los enfermamos y después estamos desemparados. All of this, all of these things, a U.S.-Columbia relationship that is based on respect and commitment, a understanding of the more than two million Colombian Americans who have contributed enormously to our country but could still use help in their small business, in the education of their children, in the health care of their families, in the well-being of a significant community, and who can make a difference in ending this pandemic with an administration that will finally have a plan and get it under control. Do we want to return to a life that is normal again? Do we want to see a future where the sun rises and doesn't set? That's what's involved in this election. Por favor, mis hermanos colombianos, salgan a votar. Salgan a votar. No deja que otro decide por ustedes. Thank you very much, Congressman Menendez and Congressman Gallego to, to, for your remarks. I hope it will help uh, our audience to make a decision and to understand how politics impact their daily lives. Thank you very much again. And Eduardo, come back to you. Gracias. Thank you very much, uh, Claudia, for the wonderful moderation. Thank you, Senator Menendez, for, uh, for those, uh, those remarks. And, and, and to you, Representative Gallego, as well. Uh, Let me just very, very briefly try to summarize what, what I have heard from you. Uh, one other than agreeing with you that certainly Senator Biden, Vice President Biden is a much better choice than, than the opposition. Uh, uh, let, me, let me just put this into a little bit of context. Uh, uh, it appears to me that uh, Senator Biden has a very, very long history with Colombia. This isn't something that he gained as a result of um, a little bit of uh, uh, neo-Cold Warism of the last three years. This is something that the senator has had, the vice president has had since uh, he came into office. And in fact, uh, one of the striking things is when, when people say you've had a career of 47 years, and you know, what do you have to show for it? One of the things that is very clear from your remarks and from what I have read and seen of, the, of, of Vice President Biden really is seen in, in, in the case of Colombia, how he thought through the, the war on drugs and went from trade preferences to the design of the Plan Colombia, how the next stage in that was the development of, the, of a free trade arrangement, 
and then toward greater conceptualization now in this idea of having a special relationship with Colombia. Uh, in other words, treating Colombia not as for years we Latin Americans have been treated by American foreign policy as second or third or fourth class citizens, but as special partners, as partners in a, in a relationship that, that will make uh, the region foster. And precisely because Colombia has done the right things and because the U.S. has been a partner. And, and there, something that's also been very striking to me from your, from your remarks, from both of your remarks, and of course, which the vice president always mentions, which is his long uh, pattern of working in a bipartisan fashion. Uh, this is not only a democratic thing. This is a bipartisan effort. And frankly, as polarized as we are, it, it really seems that you know, our only option going forward is to find a bipartisan uh, way forward, a, a way in which we look at Colombia, uh, the way we should look at the rest of the world in terms of how, how both parties can work toward uh, a good relationship with Colombia. And in that, and in that sense, I was also, uh, uh, I want to, to, uh, to ratify some of the things that uh, uh, that both uh, uh, of our Congress, members of Congress have said uh, in relationship to the uh, recent controversy, the way in which some members of, of the other party and some members of uh, conservative members in Colombia have attempted to use the current moment to further divide us. And I think the approach that both of you propose there uh, is really worth reiterating. That in other words, foreign policy has to be a bilateral effort. Uh, foreign policy has to be a bipartisan effort. And that this isn't about taking names and, and coming back in January and punishing anybody. It's about rebuilding that relationship in a bipartisan way. That it appears to me from, from what, I, what I know, what I've heard is that it's the vice president who can, who can lead that. Finally, I, you know, the, the, the question that, that's striking is to me is the way both of you have talked about why is it that Colombian Americans ought to, ought to vote for, uh, uh, for this Democratic ticket. And frankly, you know, from Florida, it's quite striking because, you know, just looking at the data, there are about 365,000 Colombians in, in Florida, about 250,000 of whom are now eligible to vote. And uh, probably we will have somewhere in the neighborhood of 150,000 Colombians who will vote. And uh, unfortunately, they too have been targeted by a lot of the, a lot of this, you know, this rhetoric. And, and it appears to me that something that, that uh, Representative Gallego said is very important to remind them of and other Hispanics as well. One, Hispanics are the largest consumers per capita of the Affordable Care Act, of Obamacare. And what we're facing right now, as you go into your vote, in fact, is the real possibility that within a couple of, of days, right, around November 12th, health care for another 20 million Americans will, will end, and it will be disproportionately affecting Latinos, and by extension, it will be affecting uh, Colombians. Therefore, you know, that, that emphasis that you gave to healthcare, so there's no doubt Colombians in our polls show what are their interests, what are they concerned about? They're concerned about health, they're concerned about the state of the economy, they're concerned about their personal safety, and they also are concerned to, about, about their, their relatives who are not yet citizens of this country. And, and so, Listening to you, I'm reassured that uh, that there is a way forward that will lead us really into 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 a, a moment in which not only will Colombian Americans have a role in determining who will win this election, uh, but uh, but also the policy direction that that this country will take. So again, I want to thank you all for for joining us. Thank you for for uh, for the opportunity to be to to offer these final remarks.